What are you doing? I'm tucking my phone so it's not like rudely displayed as though I'm not paying attention. My phone's over there. Well, mine's Normally it's closer. in my pocket. Mine's closer than that. So I saw a post. You did, okay. And the post said something to the effect of the phone is something that lets you get closer mm -hmm. unless you're already with the person and then it pushes you away. True, very true. Um, as real estate agents, we live on our phones. So how do you strike the balance of what you're doing, mm -hmm. being present, not staring at the phone? Because I'm the first one to say, I've got an addiction. Yeah. I am on the phone, staring at it and all that a lot. And I try to control myself, but I'm not sure that I always do. Yes, the struggle is real, especially because we work in an industry that requires you to be if not always on, then then easily accessible, right? Um, so that checking in and that habit forming of what's happening, what's happening, what's happening, um, which is really comes down to, does someone need me, right? Does someone need me? And so uh, it is very difficult for me to go any real length of time without at least checking. I can see what's there. And if I'm in the middle of doing something else, say, I'll get to that later. But keeping it off to the side. But you don't do the... In, the eye watch and the I constant don't. messaging and no no i don't because i know that wouldn't be healthy for me yeah. it's, it's difficult enough to strike the balance with the cell phone and the laptop um you know we had some things i had to do last weekend we were away from my kids birthday trip and um they had a really great time running around the water park and for part of it i had my laptop off on the side you know but it was um it was something that i did and then i was able to be where I was. So I count myself grateful that- How long did you have to hold the laptop underwater before it stopped working? <laughs> yeah. Uh, it took a few tries, but I got there in the end, yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, it is it is difficult to balance for sure. On the plus side, I would not have wanted to do real estate when you had to drive all over the state to get a signature, when you had didn't have the technology to get things done quickly. Um, I think we can certainly be more efficient and, and help more people because of the ease that technology gives us. So. It's a difficult balance. So you will acknowledge that we all, all real estate agents have a phone somewhere within arm's reach. Always. How come when I call an agent, they don't freaking answer? Uh, because they aren't prioritizing you. Are they? They're not, right? So they're seeing who's calling or they don't recognize the number and they're not, they're not picking up. Um, I do think too, though, this is very much, I'm not, I'm not trying to be ageist or whatever the <laughs> word is, but... I think generationally, there are certain customs, there are certain folks who really like to be on the phone, or that's their expectation is that business is conducted on the phone. Some people feel that way about email. Many, many, many people feel that way these days about text. So it comes down to what the client's preferred channel of communication is, or the agent's preferred channel of communication. My issue is tends to be agent to agent. Mm -hmm. If a client chooses to you smoke signals or this is my dinner time or we got, pigeons. <laughs> uh, we got a call yesterday. Uh, love to talk to you about the offer, but we can't do it right now because Carolyn just fell off the jungle yeah. gym and she's going to the hospital. She may need surgery. That takes priority. That's okay. Yeah, that's yes. You're on <laughs> I'm talking. I'm talking more the agents mm. that, and let's make this for agents. Answer your phone. Okay. <laughs> Look at the text. And I get that you can't do it all the time. Sure. Yeah. Okay. I get that sometimes you might be in the shower. Okay. What are you going to do? But you, you, you shouldn't be in a case where you really are invisible. True. Devil's advocate, though. If you're on the phone, as we are frequently on the phone, how often are you on the phone and you have someone beeping in trying to access you? I always call back, though. Okay, so it's not just the answering your phone, it's a timely reply. So yeah. it's, it's the decoupling of you have to always answer your phone versus if you can't answer your phone, get back within what's a fair amount. My, my colleague Sue and I put an offer on a property. It happens to be a foreclosure. Um, we've put in the offer the traditional way. We put the offer in through prop offers, which is some yes. online yeah. thing, and no answer. Uh -huh. And the offer has at this point on paper expired. We finally have the agent down yesterday. He says, no, it hasn't expired. They haven't even looked at it yet. 
I get that. <laughs> when we talked to you before we submitted the offer, we said, how much time do they need? Right. And it's not so much that we're trying to hold that agent accountable mm. in that particular case. It's that I've got a client that can't sleep at night because they want to know how they did with their offer. Did they win the house? Right, right, right. And it, it's hard. Yep. And you want to communicate and give the best service to your clients. If you don't have the information, then you don't have anything to share. And that's right. disappointing for all of us who want to do a good job. Yeah. Absolutely. So anything else on phone etiquette? Well, I think if you're out and about, whether you are with clients, whether you are with other agents, um, it, it is important when you're in a group setting, in a meeting or in, uh, you know, a lunch, you know, could be a luncheon, could be a dinner. Um, do put it aside for that amount of time. I think that we get very caught up in our own sense of self-importance. And while I don't advocate waiting days and days or even really hours and hours and hours, if it's an hour or two, most things can wait an hour or two. And I would argue that if you're looking at your phone at a lunch appointment or you're looking at your phone in the middle of a meeting, that you don't need to be at that lunch and you don't need to be at that meeting because if you're on your phone, you're not at that lunch and you're not at that meeting. Not really, not mentally. And so um, one of my favorite things when I worked for CVS Health Corporate back in my corporate days was they had... Moon socket. Moon socket, yes. Talk about high atop a illustrious world headquarters. Um, but they, ha they actually have a very, you know, kind of cool campus. And one of the biggest things they promoted to the point where we had a little slogan at everyone's desk and it was very simple. It was be here now. And yeah. It went with all of their leadership training. It went with all of their, um, you know, sort of professional development courses. And when you follow or try to follow that be here now, then you are really present wherever you are. And if you can't be present where you are, maybe that's not the right place for you to be. I like that. I like that. Well, thank you for tuning in. I hope you got some good tips from this. Thanks, everybody. And we will continue.